know that our God is still in control. Uh, although we may not know what's going on, our God is still in control. And He's so good each and every day. His mercies are bright and new each and every day. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for the richness of your glory. We thank you, God, for your awesome majesty. We thank you, God, that we are enabled by your grace and mercy and through the blood of your son, Jesus, oh God, to worship in your wonderful and holy presence. God, we thank you that your presence gives us fullness of joy. We thank you, God, that the fellowship of believers, Lord, allows us, Lord, to come in. Oh God, may be empty, but we depart certainly full. And so, Father, we pray, Lord, that through your word, through worship, through praise, and through prayer, that you might meet specific needs that exist within those who have come into your house of worship today. Father, we know that you are an all-knowing God, and we know your word is sufficient to meet all of our needs. And so, Father, we pray right now during this preaching moment, we pray, God, that your spirit would manifest your presence, that your spirit would apply the impact and power of your word to those who are standing in need today. Father, whether that need be salvation or encouragement, Father, we just ask that your word do what it is destined and designed to do. Uh, God, just as the rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth and things grow and blossom, we know your word will accomplish that for which it is said. And so God, we send forth your word that it might speak life into the hearts of those who are discouraged those who are in despair, those who are on the brink of giving up. We know, God, your word is able to lift us from the muck and the miry clay and give us a view of a life that we've never seen before. And so, Father, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to call your attention to Romans 8 and, and 28. Romans 8 and 28. We thank choir, choir uh, for... Uh, ministering to us in song. I was sitting here, uh, and just out of the corner of my eye, I kept saying, why does Reverend Davis keep getting up and leaving and coming back and leaving? <laughs> then I turned around and realized he was in the choir. Amen. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Romans, Romans 8, uh, in verse, verse 28. Uh, many of you probably don't even need to turn. You probably know it by heart. One of your favorite verses. But it's a nugget that is going to encourage us uh, on today. Amen? Amen. Uh, Paul, speaking in plural terms, says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. Uh, as you are seated in the presence of the Lord, as you can see, I'm going to talk this morning from the thought of basis for lifelong optimism. A basis basis, foundation for lifelong optimism. Uh, Harry Emerson uh, Fosdick uh, once wrote uh, that, that a man or a woman can put off making up his or her mind, but cannot put off making up a life. I think that's very interesting. We can put off making up our mind, but we cannot put off living life. My brothers and sisters, centuries ago, a philosopher by the name of Descartes climbed literally into a stove. He climbed into that stove and he was determined that he was going to think out life before he acted. So I'm going to sit in this stove, philosopher, and he said, I'm going to think out life before I act. And so this philosopher, Descartes, he came out and he came up with thought, just a few words that have that, that influence of modern thought even today. He said, I think, therefore I am. This all was based on the idea again that he would go into a stove, he would think or figure out life, and then he would act. Well, listen, my brothers and sisters, we cannot wait to figure life out before we live life. Amen. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the Bible reminds us and Paul reminds us that life has to be lived forward and understood backward. Because God is the grand choreographer of our life. And what we need to understand is that as God is choreographing our life, 
He literally knows the next step we don't. Come on. It is our job, it is an incumbent upon us as we walk literally by faith for us to not think and then act, but it's important for us to trust God and let God worry about what we do not understand. The songwriter said, Father alone will know all about it. Now, in the midst of Father alone, that means we are moving Father alone. It means we are trusting God through our pain. We are trusting God through uncertain situations. We are trusting God through unpredictable moments in our life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, if you go to by the philosophy of the philosopher, I think, therefore I am, you will literally be immobilized. If you operate under the premise that I've got to figure everything out before I move, your life will become literally paralyzed and you will literally not move. So for the Christian, it is not I think, therefore I am. It is I am, therefore I think. We are in essence children of God. And because we are, we think. And what we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, the challenge is to go on living even though you do not have any answers. Yes. Yes. Life can be filled with some very swift transitions. Yes. But my brother, my sister, you've got to keep on living life. Waking up every day. Yes. Trusting God. Yes. Even though you have no answers for what happened to you just a moment ago. Yes. Listen, my brothers and sisters, We've got to live life even though we have no explanation. The Bible, the Bible always arranges life and thought in just that sequence. We are called, my brothers and my sisters, to live passionate and open lives and to use our minds based on God's word to understand and interpret what we have experienced. Listen. God has arranged our lives so that the experiences of our lives are interpreted through our rear view mirror. All right. Listen, the pain and the anguish and the setbacks and disappointments are not understood through your forward looking mirror, but they are understood through your rear view mirror. You got to keep on going. And God will explain it to you on the back side. Amen. Amen. Listen, if we try to put understanding before we live life, we become immobilized and the process of living in joy becomes locked. That's why so many Christians are living defeated lives. Why so many believers are not living victorious lives. Because we think we've got to understand before we can trust. God says trust before you understand. Listen, the first thing we've got to do, we often want to get the answers. And then live life in light of our understanding. But listen, we never get the answers, answers, and then understand the problem. Listen. I was in school. I did not like algebra, calculus. Amen. Amen. And, and I would often go to the back of the book to the answer guy to get the answer. Amen. Somebody talk to me. And I'd put down the answer, turn it in. Teacher would ask me to explain the formula of the problem. I didn't have any idea. We want the answer. But we don't want to go through the problem. Somebody talk to me. We want the victory, but we don't want to go through the suffering. And God said, even if I give you the answer, if you don't go through the problem, you ain't going to rejoice over the answer. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, Paul is reminding us in this very familiar passage of Scripture. And notice, Paul says, uh, and we did a sermon, I think it was the third Sunday of January, I talked about the universal all talked about how many times the word all is used in scripture and Romans 8.28 is one of those incidents when we see the word all. It, Paul does not say some things. 
He does not say a few things. He does not say a lot of things. He does not say select things, good things, bad things, sad things, funny things. He says all things. And Paul says we've got to realize this because when we realize that God says all things, this is the basis for lifelong optimism. The Bible equates optimism by using the four-letter word hope. And my brothers and sisters, this word hope and Paul's premise of all things working together for our good, this text is an all-powerful and an always promise that comes from God. Amen. It's all-powerful. All and my brothers and sisters, it is always available. Amen. Literally, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, he throws this promise on the pathway of each day and every moment. Paul literally tosses this promise from Romans 8 28 on the pathway of your life. And so every step you take as you are trusting God, before you take the step, is a promise from God that all things will work together literally for your good. Now I want you to know something. Paul's promise through the Holy Spirit in this text is not a goal but a guarantee. This God working all things out for you good is not a goal that we aspire to. It is a guarantee that God has given us. And when God gives a guarantee, God will back up his guarantee. I don't know that your face will ever step, but God guarantees that they'll all work out for your good. So Paul, listen, reminds us and tells us a number of things that we want to glean from this text. The first thing that we want to glean from this text is the suddenness with which we can find ourselves at the end of our hope. The suddenness with which we can find ourselves at the end of not our rope, but our hope. Listen, in one moment to the next, your aspirations can turn to ashes. In one moment, your happiness can turn to heartbreak. In one moment, your serenity can be disturbed by a storm. And my brothers and sisters, when we realize the suddenness at which we can come to the end of our hope, you've got to know that there are some guarantees that come from God. The same person that can hold your hand and make you smile one day can make you cry at the end of the same day. The same song that can bring joy to your heart can bring you pain on the next day. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the suddenness by which we can reach the end of our hope can be certainly impactful. Amen. And when that suddenness and that unexpected hits us, we've got to have some guarantees from guarantees from God by which we can glean some hope that can help us keep stepping even when we don't understand. But not only does the text remind us and even challenge us to deal with the suddenness with which we can find ourselves at the end of our hope, it causes us secondly to deal with the staggering effect of finding ourselves at the end of our hope. The staggering effect of finding ourselves at the end of our hope. In other words, we can be felt met with the suddenness, but then the suddenness can stagger us. In other words, we see the blow coming, but after that blow comes, we wind up being a little wobbly for a minute because we did not see it coming. I want you to understand something. God does not give us spiritual peripheral vision. That's why he said goodness and mercy. She'll follow me all the days of my life. There are some things you're not going to see. You're not going to see them coming from behind, from the side, or even from the front. And when you don't see them coming and those blows hit you, they can stagger you literally. And you wind up stumbling through life. But God gives some promises that can help you. Listen, some of you stumbled in here today. 
but you made it in here. Some of you came in here with a heart broken, but you came in here. And it wasn't your own strength, but you came looking for a word from God that even while you're staggering and you had number seven on the eight count, God is going to step in, read the mail, call you to the corner, give you some help, send you back in, and say, keep on fighting. This is the race. Is not given to the swift, and the battle not to the strong, but to those that endure until the end. We've got to deal with the suddenness at which we find ourselves at the end of our hope, the staggering effect of finding ourselves at the end of our hope. And when we deal with the staggering effect, we've got to understand, and this is what troubles us even in Romans 8 28, it says, All things work together for good to them that love God and a call according to his purpose. And what staggers us, listen, is not the blow. What staggers us is that we love God, we're doing his purpose, but we still get hit. Listen, all things work together for good. Now that all things means good and bad things. How can I love you and do your purpose but still be going through what I'm going through. God said, because you love me and do my purpose, you're going to experience some things and some mysteries that you don't understand. But God said, I'm going to work it out for your good. I'm going to work it out for your benefit. I'm going to take your pain and I'm going to turn it literally into joy. You can be pursuing the will of God and find yourselves literally at the end of your hopes. But then thirdly, Paul talks to us about the special intervention that is required when we are at the end of our hope. The special intervention required when we are at the end of our hope. The Bible over and over again tells us that when we are at a situation where we have been hit suddenly, we're staggering, we'll get some special intervention. And the Lord says, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is reminding us, my brothers and sisters, that whatever you're going through is by divine design. God is orchestrating and choreographing the situations in your life in order that God may get the praise. But then lastly, Paul is reminding us about the superlative blessing that results from being at the end of your hope. The superlative blessing that results from literally being at the end of your hope. There's four men have a wonderful album, uh, the United Tenors. I love listening to them. Brother Fred Hammond, Brother Hollister, Brother Wilson, Brother Eric Roberson. And they sing a song entitled, I'm in the Midst of It All. And the song says, to know that your presence is all that we need is more than enough. Listen, my brothers and sisters. We need to understand, my brothers and sisters. And they said, when your heart is overwhelmed, you need to look to the cross. And there you'll be reminded that I'm in the midst. I'm in the midst of it all. When your life is hurt, I'm in the midst of it all. When you feel so undeserved, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Just call on my name. I'm in the midst of it all. And somebody needs to hear this. They said, I'm in the midst of it all. When troubles are all around you, I'm in the midst of it all. When you feel like you won't make it through, don't be afraid. Listen, my brothers and sisters, he'll say, peace, literally, be still. My brothers and my sisters, Leading Forward has a book entitled The Attentive Life. And I recommend that book to anyone, but Leading Forward in the book The Attentive Life said that we've all got to learn how to discover or discern God's presence in all things. Amen. And that's literally what Paul is saying. You've got to learn how to discern and discover God's presence in all things. It was Paul who said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, Be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Listen, my brothers and sisters, thanksgiving is the most therapeutic attitude that you could ever have. 
Thanksgiving yeah. is the key to a sound mind yeah. in the midst of your pain. Yeah. Many of us may be saying, what do I have to be thankful for in the midst of my pain? Well, the fourth United Tenor says that when your heart is overwhelmed, look to the cross. Yeah. Listen, if you ain't got nothing else to thank God for, thank God that his son died on the cross. Somebody said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Whatever your problem, it's Jesus. Whatever your pain, it's Jesus. Whatever your sorrow, it's Jesus. Whatever keeps you up at night, it's Jesus. Whatever has you lonely, it's Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross on one side. But the Bible says, Jesus died up with all the power on heaven and earth in his hands. And Jesus is able to conquer whatever you're going through in life and give you a basis for lifelong optimism all the way through your life. Trust Jesus. Let Jesus be the answer. Let Jesus fix it. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Deacons, if you'll come as we stand all over the bed. Your basis, your basis for lifelong optimism has to begin by giving your heart to Christ, allowing Him through His blood to pardon you of your sin, all to be kept by Jesus. He is able to keep you in perfect peace. He is able to keep you until that day when He comes back for you. But you've got to come and confess, give Him your heart. Give us your hand, and God will keep you by his precious blood. If you're here today, and you have not experienced the pardoning grace of Christ, it is able not only to wipe tears, but to wipe sin away. Amen. Able to take all of the guilt and the shame, it's Jesus. And so if you're here today, and you've not entered into a relationship with Christ, we invite you to come. If you don't understand what it is, we invite you to come. Amen. Allow us to counsel and direct you. Tell you what it means to live and to have this new and wonderful life that we all have. We're not promising that life will be free of pain. But we're promising that Jesus will help you to deal with the pain in your life. If you're here without a church home, we invite you to come and become a part of our fellowship. This choir needs us in our invitation on him. Jesus.